All right, For those of you watching from home, I'm Farah Crane from ArtsKC. I'm the Program Manager of Grants. We also have Steph. Yeah, go ahead, Steph. And I'm Steph Shannon, the Director of the Kansas City Film Office. All right, so can everybody see a slideshow? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good deal. So we already did our introductions. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the grant basics, talk about Terry Rogers, the purpose of the grant, eligibility, the timeline, and then we really want to dive into some of the meaty stuff of the application. Um, I'll touch on how to use the grant system, but we also want to look at the application questions, uh, the evaluation criteria, and really how to make your app stand out. And Steph, you want to start us off? Absolutely. So Terry Rogers um, is a, a former boss of mine. Uh, I worked for her uh, when she was the owner of Take Two that became Hint. She, uh, at, at this job at the film office, she was a film office advisor. She, uh, for a long time before the film office reopened officially as a sanctioned film office for the city, she was chair of the Kansas City All Volunteer Film Commission Board. So she was part of the team of people that really kept things going uh, until there was a, a film commissioner in place. Um, she owned and operated for years the largest production company in Kansas City. Um, so she passed away in 2018. Um, but before her, her passing, she was always, always, always giving back to the community not only you know, as, as a film commission uh, board member and chair, she was a board member of Arts KC, where this grant is coming from. She was a part of the Crossroads and Community Association. She was also part of the streetcar effort, um, but she had many, many leadership positions in the city, not only in, in the entertainment industry, but just as a, as a champion for all of Kansas City. Um, she was also very known for uplifting women in the industry and other artists. Um, she, she, she was a wife and a mom. She was a very good friend. Uh, she led the way, the path for a lot of other uh, production companies to open. A lot of production companies that opened used to work for her and under her. Um, but she was a, a, a guiding light a positive person and somebody who really did uplift others. And this, well, those reasons are the reasons why ourselves and her family and other people in the community wanted to make sure uh, we had a grant placed in her name to honor her legacy. And so this year is the inaugural year for the grant. Um, e even though she passed away in 2018, the funds from what we're able to roll out now have been being collected since then. So we're proud to say that this plans to be a year over year grant offering through Arts KC. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so this is the Terry Rogers Filmmakers Grant. Um, yeah, go ahead, Steph, with the first one. What's the women in our industry. This first grant offering uh, in her name, the Terry Rogers Filmmakers Grant 2022-23, uh, is for a self-identifying woman director or gender non-conforming director. Uh, we're calling this an early career director. Um, and this person or team of persons are creating a new film, video, or digital production work in the short film narrative genre. That means non-documentary film. Um, I know, uh, Jason, you're on here, and this particular grant is for a woman director, um, also for uh, female identifying directors. Yeah. Um, in the future, we want to be able to offer a filmmaker's focus grant that is more open to all genders, just for your edification. That's something that we'll be working on, but it's not a current offering. There are other, there is another grant at Arts KC yeah. that can support film. And we can talk about that a little bit later and point yep. to it on the website. Um, but Tara, speak to uh, the purpose of the grant for Arts KC. Totally. So 
since this is our first year doing this grant, we modeled it after our other individual artist grant, which is our inspiration grant. So that's where this um, sentence comes from, but it applies to this grant as well. So the purpose is to support ambitious projects of risk, growth, and change for the filmmaker that also make a positive impact on the community. So like our inspiration grants, we're looking to support artists who are trying something new, who are looking to advance their career, um, and or doing something that is gonna have a positive community impact. It doesn't have to be both. Of course, if it is both, then it's it's very competitive in the process, but it, it can be either or, and we tell our committee members that. Um, so that's very aligned with our mission too, and supporting artists in their growth and in strengthening our community. Um, and also on here, the funding is meant to support the process of production or post-production. And I'll let Steph talk about that. And Yeah, so uh, this grant offering is a, for a short narrative film, uh, a $10,000 cash grant. Um, in addition to that, there will be a five-year membership to Film Independent. That, that organization uh, is based out of Los Angeles. And Film Independent is an organization that supports independent filmmaking in all kinds of ways. Um, and, and pretty robust offerings as far as access to panels and information. Um, if you happen to be in LA, there are a lot of things you could attend, but there are a lot of things virtually that you'd have access to, including um, uh, being part of Film Independent as a member means that you also become uh, a, a judge for the uh, Independent Spirit Film Awards. So you would get screeners every year to watch all of the kind of cream of the crop independent uh, emerging projects. And that's usually a, pre a good precursor to the Oscars. So that's a really cool aspect of, of that membership. In addition to that, a subscription to Movie Maker Magazine, another uh, great resource for independent filmmakers, and then we will be working to include mentorship opportunities so that during this, during the process of your making your film, and then potentially afterward, you would have uh, one or two people that you could connect with and ask questions of and hopefully form a relationship with uh, people that are working in the industry. So those are other perks besides just the $10,000 uh, cash to support your production or post-production. Um, I'm just really quick gonna go back to the first part early career directors. Early career directors usually have directed something before. And we'll talk more, more in depth uh, about this soon. But I know that Jamie, that's something that you're that you're need to have answered in this in this session. Um, with that said, um, I think that your supporting work, whatever that is, um, can be explained. You can write. You can write support material on, on why you want this grant, why you deserve this grant. Um, perhaps you've directed other kinds of work, um, but it, it's this is usually for somebody who has. This is not their very very first effort at directing, um, but but an early career, you know. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Okay, great. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the timeline and deadlines of the grant. So hopefully, or you might have seen this already, but the deadline to apply is in September. And below that, I have the activity dates, which are May 18th to June 15th. And what that means in grant speak, if you will, is that for this specific grant, the, the filming, the production, or the post-production should take place within those dates. So if you're applying for a project that you think you're going to be doing in two years to five years, then that wouldn't be eligible. Um, it's something that would be you'd be working on either right now or, you know, within this May 18th to June 15th, 2023 timeline. So in terms of the process, after you apply in September, the committee meets end of September, but also in October, they read all the applications, watch all the work samples and um, evaluate independently and then come together to discuss. There should be a decision made by November. Um, and that's when you would know if you got the grant or not. 
And then the impact report. So how we do grants at ArtsKC is we pay out 80% of the grant initially. So you'd get that first payment in November or December. Um, and then you get the 20% after you fill out an impact report, which is a report on, on your progress, on the project, uh, what you accomplished, what you learned, how did it go, basically. After reporting, then we pay out that, that last 20%. I think that equals 8,000 and 2,000, if I'm doing the math right. And stop us if you have any questions. Um, grant making can be a little confusing, I know, so just let us know. Okay, the next big chunk is eligibility. Okay, so the easy part, this isn't for students, this is uh, for adults. So you have to be 18 years of age or older, um, and this is not uh, funding student film. Um, this is for your effort at a professional production. Um, the applicants must identify as a woman or gender nonconforming. Um, uh, it must be a film, video, or digital production work in the short film narrative genre. And I'm going to focus on that just for a moment because we got a question from someone before this session asking about a web series. Now, a web series wouldn't count, but if there was a proof of concept for the series, uh, that, would, that would potentially count as a short film. So feel free if you've got some kind of project like that that sort of you know, you've got questions about Tara and I are here to help answer those, but this is for basically a short, short film form narrative work. Um, and by narrative, it's fiction. This is a, it could be based on reality, but this is a, you know, a fiction script. Um, the applicants must, the applicant or applicants must assume the role of the director with artistic and creative control. Uh, there are cases where there could be one director or there could be two directors you could co-direct. Um, the project and yourselves must have copyright of your um, artistic production, and that includes music. I, I just wanna focus on that because some of the time, especially with lower budgets, we're kind of using music in, in tracks um, as a lot of holding music, but sometimes it never gets replaced, uh, but you have to have rights to everything, including you know, the actors that are in it, um, uh, we'll kind of glean on this a little bit later, but, you know, keeping all of your paperwork in order, all of your permits in order, all of your agreements with actors, uh, all of your agreements with locations, um, and all of your rights agreements, keeping all that paperwork in order will be something that you're going to want to keep and that Arts KC can ask for. Um, Let's see, what else? You must reside or work in the five county Kansas City metro area that Arts KC serves. That's Jackson, Clay, Platt, and in Missouri, and then Johnson and Wyandotte in Kansas. Um, applications from adjacent counties will be considered if the project takes place within the service area. Um, for example, like shooting in the service area, but the five county area is main, the main area. Um, again, okay. So being, being in the early stage of your film career, um, this is why it's not for students. This is also why it's not, um, I think, and Jamie, you may still want to apply, uh, but I do believe that several of the other applicants may already have one film under their belt, if not more. Um, but just keep that in mind. This is really the end product we want to see have legs we want to see it hopefully get into some really uh great festivals we want to be able to do some screenings not that that can't happen out of the gate with a first-time director but but we're, we're we're really focusing on somebody who's at least done it one time so that you're not just working out all the bugs as a brand brand new director in this for this project um you you kind of know what you're doing you're, you're really into this you know, script and you wanna get it taken care of. And so you're not learning every single thing in the course of this work, if that makes sense. And we can talk more about it later. And if you have questions, we'll certainly be able to answer those for you. We, wanna, we want to kind of tip our hats that special consideration will be given to projects where Kansas City or the region serves as a character or is highlighted as a place. Um, there's so much to offer in Kansas City and we just 
want to give special consideration for that. In addition, special consideration uh, will give it will be given to projects that prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so that is, is there one more page for eligibility? Yeah, let's see. So projects consider documentaries, uh, installations, new media, games, or other interactive work are not eligible. Um, this does not include animation. Animation could count. Um, in addition, commercial or industrial music videos, informational videos or student work, those are not eligible either. Um, and uh, there's another grant that uh, we mentioned before, an inspiration grant given through ArtsKC. If you've received that grant in the year 2021-22 from ArtsKC, you wouldn't be eligible for this one again. You have to wait a year. So that's the basic eligibility. Do you guys have questions about that part? Okay, we'll move on and then we can do some questions at the end. Awesome. All right, so let's talk about the application. The first slide I have here is kind of the directions I already sent to you in an email, um, but our application is online. So in order to access it, you do have to create an account in our system. It's pretty easy, but please, you know, shoot me an email if you come up with any um, roadblocks or questions there. Just let me know, and I can always go in on the back end and help you help you through that. Um, so what I'm going to do is exit out of this, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from your end. So I happen to have both of my dogs have accounts that I can use. I have a dog named Humphrey, of course, and Hudson. But anyway, okay, so when you log in, this is what you will see. Um, the application, some of the stuff we just talked about, the eligibility, the timeline is all on there. And over here is where you can see the application. So I'm going to click apply. And so you can see that I'm already, I've already created my account. So it has all my information up here. Um, but let's just, let's just dive in. So we have the purpose of the grant, the award here. The first few questions are identifying, you know, the project name, what's your role, gender. Here, when it's asking about individual or co-directing team, we're looking for, you know, if it is a team, what are the names of all the directors? And then we get into narrative questions. So the questions we're asking, number one, project description. So this is kind of the first thing that evaluators will read. So it's pretty important. Be very clear in what the an overall description of the project is. So we have make sure to include genre, medium, log line, projected running time, status, uh, timeline, and why all of this is important and relevant. I can't stress enough that that first one, that's really what introduces your project to the, to the evaluation team. Beyond that, we get a little bit deeper. So we ask about the project plot and summary. So this gives you a chance to elaborate a little bit more on the project. Um, so give an overview, themes, characters, plot points, et cetera. Oh, someone's joining us. Hi, Victoria. We are just going through the application. Please let us know in the chat if you have any questions or speak up too. Okay, so uh, the next question we have is artistic approach. So how are you going to tell the story, create a vision, visual look and feel, cinematic language? So again, all of these are really giving you a chance to explain the project to the committee. The next one, creative community, kind of has dual parts. So first we're asking about your artistic mentors, peers, inspirations, but this is also where we're asking about the diversity of your project. Um, so ArtsKC has been very big in our grant making on making sure that it's equitable, that we're supporting projects that support DEI in our community. So you can look at our diversity statement here Actually, I might need to update that link. 
we just got a new website. But ideally, you will be able to see our diversity statements there. Um, and we want to know about your creative team, um, the basic demographic characteristics, um, race, ethnicity, religion, international origin, sexual orientation, abilities, et cetera. That gives us a glimpse into who's working on the project. And then this question too, so we're asking about your audience. How do you plan to reach that audience? Also, what is your relationship to that community? Do you have partners, collaborators? So tell us about your audience and also tell us how this project will impact that audience, will impact the local community and the greater film community. So both of these questions have kind of multiple questions in one. So just make sure that you try to answer all the questions. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but we're not looking for a couple sentences here. I think this is a great chance for you to elaborate and show us what you know about your audience, show us what you know about your creative community. Um, the more you can tell us, the better, I would think. So be sure to elaborate there. Back to the original purpose of the grant, which was community or advancement of professional development. Here's a chance for you to talk about that. How is this risk-taking and innovative for you? How will it advance your career, con contribute to your artistic development, um, how it relates to your future? And those are the narrative questions. And you, and I should have said this before, you can always look at this through the portal. There's also on our website, there's, oh my gosh. Um, if you go to how to apply, there's an application preview, it's a PDF. So you can access this a couple different ways if you want to just, you know, look at it a few times before you get started. Beyond that, we need to know the location of the project, the activity dates, project cost. And this question trips people up sometimes because even though the grant is for 10,000, um, we wanna know the total cost of the project here. So if your project is you know, $100,000 or more, still put that even though the grant is only 10,000. Then I might hand it over to Steph to talk about the budget and then maybe I'll add on a little bit too. So here's, I'll pull it up. Uh, big, Tara's got kind of a, we have this template that we share with people as needed and um, it's just a budget a budget template. Um, and then we I do at the film office have other examples of other uh, budget templates, but this is just kind of a simple top sheet. And this is, this is all Arts KC will need. Basically it, and this is a guide. You can use this as a guide, but it breaks down kind of each department, each line item and what your estimated spend will be for those things. And that will create your project's total budget. Um, and that that kind of form is what you will submit with your application. Um, but it, you'll see it's post-production expenses are lined out, production expenses are lined out, pre-production expenses are lined out um, because the project is a total project, even though you might only be using this grant for you know, the filming part or the post-production part or just part of the filming part. Um, as you, you guys all know, as well as I do, 10,000 is a lot for a grant, but it's, it also can be very much a drop in the bucket when it comes to film. These projects are, are filming is expensive to do, to do everything you want to do. And uh, hopefully for this kind of, you know, grant, that's taken into consideration what, what your script is asking for. And it's a doable budget for you because we, we want to see a finished project at the end. Um, we wanna make sure that it's a feasible project to get done. So along with, you know, that's why they need to know what your full budget is and, and some comments on how your full budget is, is funded so that Arts Casey will know there's an actual fully formed project at the end of this that they'll be able to uh, feature you with and talk about and you know potentially um, tell the media about things of that nature but we want to make sure your project can get done so does that help 
but everything, this guide is really easy to use if you haven't used one before. It just, it helps you think through everything. Yeah, and I will add, so it's the one you mentioned, this is the top sheet. There are other sheets if you need them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's made to where like it connects back. So if I put rehearsal expenses there, it's gonna all add up for you. And then it's gonna show up on the top sheet over here too. Yeah. So this, and with the budget, um, just so you know, back to our website under the how to apply, that's where you can access this template. And a couple of things that evaluators will be looking for Make sure A, that your budget is balanced, which means that your um, expenses matches your income. So right now, my $6 movie is not balanced. So if an evaluator saw this, it'd be like, well, where are you gonna get the $6? You know, you didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so make sure that it's balanced. And that means that I think on this, we do have a, a sheet for income. Um, but if you, for example, if you put in the income, you would make sure to put this grant. So the $10,000 from this grant, any other crowdsourcing or any other grants or awards, make sure to put what you're contributing. contributing. Um, so that way, evaluators, again, to Seth's point, they're judging the feasibility based on this budget. So if they see that, you know, the other the other sources of funding aren't as reliable as some, or that could be that could be a detractor. So make sure to put in everything that you're doing for fundraising, and and again, make sure it's balanced. Um, and I will say that with budgets, double, triple check it because it's the one part of the application that's pretty objective. I would say. You know, when they're reading about your movie, some they're judging on artistic excellence, which they're all experts. And so there is some objectivity to that, but it's also, you know, there's a little bit of opinion there, but with numbers, it's pretty easy to poke holes in something. So I've seen a lot of evaluators love a project artistically, but then the budget doesn't, it either it's not balanced or it's not detailed enough, or it doesn't match the project. So if you're in your project description, you're saying it's really important for you to pay artists, um, but then in your budget, you don't have any artist stipends or artist fees, then the committee's gonna catch that and be, you know. So numbers are a really easy way for evaluators to kind of look at two applications side by side objectively. So don't overlook the budget is all I'm saying. Put, double, triple check it, make sure it matches your application, make sure it's balanced um, and put a lot of detail into that as well. And I just wanna add quickly, because um, you're either writing the material yourselves or you're choosing a script or optioning a script. If you're choosing something that needs to be a small size, um, you know, your budget will wanna reflect that. If you're you know, it's, if you're doing a sci-fi short, your expenses for effects might be really, really big. And if you're an effects person, that will be okay. But if you're not, and that's outsourced, it'll be a red flag for everybody look, considering your, your, um, your application. Because again, at the end of the day, everybody wants to see a finished project, something that, that will be able to be done and, and, and seen and screened. So. so yeah, and again, this budget template, totally optional. We offer it so that, you know, just to make it easier, if you, if you need it, you might already have a budget, you don't need it. There's nothing wrong with that either. It's also a little spot for you to talk about the budget, talk about fundraising, um, any contingency plans that you have for fundraising, anything you wanna highlight in the budget. There's a little narrative spot there too. Beyond that, on the application, um, we do ask for your resume. That's a good way for us to see um, if it fits into the early career director and to see your previous work, 
um, then work samples. So I'll get us started on this step. And then if you wanna add anything, feel free. So we are looking for links. Um, we put in two spots for work samples and we want it to add up to 10 minutes total um, so that it's not a, a huge burden on the evaluators. So make sure that if you only have a link to a full project, but you're only wanting evaluators to watch a few minutes of it to make sure to write, you know, when to start and stop the clip. Um, beyond that, we have here everything we're looking for. So type in the box along with the link. So name of the work, year completed, uh, where the work has been screened, et cetera. Okay, what I missed. I, uh, can I ask a question? Or sure. Is there, and it might be coming up later, but is there a link for where they're gonna upload the script? Yes. Okay. There we go. Yep. Okay. Um, and if I may, one of the things that you guys might do as filmmakers, whenever you have a new project, you might do a lookbook. And, and really it's, it's almost, it's wonderful because it's almost like these questions that they're asking of you, but into one document. A lookbook is generally used for, for showing investors or potential people potentially giving you money for your project, you know, what the project's gonna look like, what the log line is, who your team is, um, some, you know, maybe captured uh, material from other films or photographs that show kind of the mood of your piece, things of that nature. So if you do look books, then you probably, this kind of, um, these kind of narrative questions might be a lot easier for you. I think that one of the things you might be able to do is also include a lookbook in your application materials along with your script. Um, and I, I think feel free to copy and paste the, your lookbook information into these narrative, um, you know, the places you're answering these narrative questions for Arts KC. Um, but make sure, because lookbooks are very concise, make sure to expound a bit more in this application. I, you know, as the film commissioner, I'm so excited that there's a grant offering and I want you to stand out and put your best foot forward. And we want to, you know, see year over year like the best projects coming out of this. Um, so we want our committee to be able to um, select, you know, the best, the best work and um, lookbooks are a kind of a great way to guide you in that because it helps you again, it's kind of like the budget helps you think through every aspect of your projects in order to try to get the support and funding that you need. So that's another thing that you might want to think about. Okay, and then beyond that, uh, we ask for you to kind of summarize the project. So we use this in our uh, marketing materials, same with the image. So that's what we'll use on our website and social. And then the last section is optional. Um, we like to make sure that our grants are reaching a diverse applicant pool. So this is purely internal. It doesn't affect your evaluation. Um, and that, is the application. You can save it before you submit it um, and you have until September. So always, you can keep coming back to it and always give it some time, I think, give it a few looks. Okay, so really quick, I wanted to talk about the evaluation criteria and then we'll finish up with some tips for applications. So you can access this evaluation criteria on the website as well. Um, here under evaluation, there's the actual form that our committee will use to evaluate the applications. So I, this is one of my tips actually, make sure to read this so that you can craft your application to fit into, into these criteria. So the first one is artistic achievement. Oh, and I should say there all the application criteria are weighted equally for our for our scoring that kind of starts our discussion. So um, keep that in mind. 
each one, the, uh, the evaluators kind of leave some comments and then give a score and then they submit it. And then when we come together as a group, that's kind of our starting point are those scores, but to kind of get the conversation going. So artistic achievement and quality is one. So we're looking at distinctive and authentic artistic voice, bold and risk-taking approach, technical proficiency, creativity, et cetera. Then career and community impact. Again, it doesn't have to be both. I think ones that are both are extremely competitive. Um, we already kind of talked about that one. Here's feasibility and budget, like we talked about earlier. Um, look, the evaluators are gonna be looking at the budget and determining if this has a good chance of being completed. Is the budget balanced? Are fundraising goals viable? Is the production timeline and scope feasible? So that's where your budget really plays a big part. We have a DEI criteria. So does the project include representation of BIPOC, women and or gender non-conforming individuals, other excuse me, marginalized communities in the makeup of the team and or the story or plot line? Is this representation informed by appropriate means of research or community involvement? And then finally, the Kansas City region. So does Kansas City serve as a character? Is it highlighted symbolically or realistically? Or are the topics relevant to the region? So those are the evaluation criteria. And again, they're all weighted equally. So that means a couple things. It means they're all important, but it also means that if your application is really strong in everything but career and community impact, for example, you can still be competitive, right? So I think the, the strongest application, obviously, hypothetically, would be really strong in every category. But we see people get grants that, you know, are a little weak in one category. We see people not get grants that are a little weak in all the categories or several. So it can look a lot of different ways. But just keep in mind strategically when you're writing your application, this is what the evaluators are looking for. So craft your application appropriately, if that makes sense. Tara, I have, I have a question uh, kind sure. of off of any filmmaker. Say, say a filmmaker um, applies this year and is not selected. It, is their application information, does it stay in the system so that they can use they can use it as a base for applying next year or does it zero out and they start kind of from scratch the following year? So we have a, like a, I forget what it's called, a copy answers feature. So you can copy answers from your previous application. So okay. yes, yeah, it's not automatically saved. You kind of have to prompt it, but it's in the system. And I could also always send you a previous application if for some reason it's not working and you can pull from it. But we do have that feature. So hopefully that helps. And definitely apply again. And we also, if you do not get the grant, we offer feedback sessions where I can tell you what the evaluators saw as a positive in your application, what the evaluators thought you could work on. So that can help you not only apply for our grant again, but apply for other grants as well. Any other questions about the application or the evaluation? I know that was a lot, but you can always keep going back to it because it's on the website. And if you have any specific big questions you want to ask us, you can always email us too. Go ahead, Jamie. I have a question and I'm sorry if this was addressed because I was in another meeting, but I've never um, applied for an artistic grant before. And so my question is like, surrounding the protection of your material. Is there any type of NDA or any um, assurance that, you know, your material is protected once you share it as a part of the process? That's a good point. Um, I will say, so no, but the application is confidential. The only mm -hmm. people that will look at the application are the evaluators. Um, and then beyond that, once the project is finished, 
anything that you share on our impact report, you do, we ask, um, are you comfortable with us sharing this? And you can say no. You can say, this is not public information. I don't want you to share like my images or my work sample or anything. Um, the only thing we do share is when the application asks for, let me scroll up. It asks for summary representation, something like that. Here we go. This, whatever you put in this narrative box here is what we'll put on the website if you, if you receive the grant. And whatever image you use here, that's what we'll put on like social media and the website. So those are the only two things that ever leave the application beyond internal use. So I use these applications for looking at data, like, um, but it's never, it's never for public eyes. Does that help answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Any other questions about that stuff? We just have a couple more slides. Um, tips for making your application stand out. So kind of what we're doing right now, my first tip is to make yourself familiar with the evaluation criteria and make sure your application speaks to those criteria. That is just how the process works. You know, we have to find some way to, to kind of evaluate these and to figure out who we want to fund. So that's how the questions and the evaluation criteria come about. And so that's what we'll be looking at. So I guess it, it probably seems obvious, but that's my first tip. Make yourself familiar with those evaluation criteria. My second tip is elaborate. Um, I've read a lot of applications and other grants that the project does seem amazing, but like maybe the work samples are amazing. The artist's website and reputation is really great, but that's not what we're looking for. A, we're looking at the evaluation criteria. And if there's only a couple sentences in each box, then it's so hard when I'm looking at 10 applications and this application has paragraphs and answers all the questions I'm looking for and just gives me more information to go off of versus the one that just kind of, it's maybe too concise, um, doesn't elaborate, doesn't give me enough. So that's my, my tip number two is make sure your the who, what, where, and how of your project are very clear to evaluators and to answer all the questions and give as much information as possible. Number three, of course, I have to say, give yourself plenty of time. You know, you saw that there are some big narrative questions in there, so might not be something to do the night before, but I always feel kind of like a teacher or something when I'm saying that. So I know you all have your own work styles, but I would suggest giving yourself plenty of time. And as I said earlier, double, triple check your budget. Um, it's not something to look over because it is one of the evaluation criteria that helps uh, the committee decide if it's feasible. So very important. Anything you want to add to that, Steph? Um, I, I'm a big fan of lookbooks. Um, do you guys, do you want to see what one looks like? Do you, are you very familiar, this particular group, are you very familiar with what those look like? I can't see your faces. I can share my screen quick. Can I do that, Tara? Let's see. How do I share my screen? I just made you co-host, so let me know if I need to make you co-host. <laughs> so let's see. Just a, a quick example. This example comes from Film Independent, actually. So it, it's like a, a little presentation. Um, it's got a lot of visuals, but you'll see right here, log line synopsis. Uh, this is for a movie called Drowning. Um, they even have things here like heroic moment and cause. Um, and then there are shots uh, so that uh, somebody looking at this can kind of get the, the feel for what they're going for. This looks like a kind of a dreamy 
of film. Um, here are the themes, what it's really all about. Lookbooks come in all different, you, you know, they're very project specific. So this one is just an example for this particular project, but I do like how they're detailing it out, mood, visual style, cinematography, and they've, they've selected, you know, some photographs either that they've taken or found photographs just to support what they're going for, visual style. And also what they've done here supports, you know, that there is a little bit of diversity in their project, not only, you know, some artistic uh, selections and colorful selections, but looks like a myriad of different kinds of kid characters. Looks like they've got, they're gonna do some underwater stuff, good for them. Um, they even go into specifics about key locations. Um, what what other uh, other aspects of the project that that might make it different? As you know, we've all seen films that have kind of a narrator driven uh, idea. And this particular lookbook lets everybody know that it's going to be a big part in the film is the voiceover. Um, but that's just an example of a lookbook. So my point though is that if you're going to do something like that and submit it. Um, you're not going to lean on that or lean on your work samples. You really do need to fill out the narrative boxes, but you can certainly use that as your guide, cut and paste, um, and then elaborate on those things. Um, you want each evaluator, of course, to look at your lookbook if you're going to submit it. You want them to look at that with your script. But, but again, if they're going through this um, night, night or nights where they're doing has have everyone side by side by side. You want um, all of all of what is side by side by side to be as accurate for yourself as possible. So they're going to have printed out, you know, all of that uh, information that you've typed in side by side by side with all the other applicants. So I just want to make sure that when it's side by side by side, it it really represents your project and you really really well. Lookbook aside is a separate um, asset is wonderful, but just don't lean on it all the way to, to do the work of, of what they're asking you for narratively in the application. I think that's my only big, big thought on that because I know a lot of you have great work to show. So you're gonna have great links and like, let them know that these are the 10 seconds I really want you to see. They will look at that, but that can't replace what you're gonna write about this project, about this team, about your themes, about why it's going to be an impact to the community. So make sure to really represent yourself well. And I want you to, it's time to toot your own horn. It's okay. You know, this is not the place for you to, you know, kind of go overboard with things that aren't 100% accurate because a lot of things are check outable. But um, make sure you're, you're kind of in your world all the time so you forget how maybe magnificent you are or a project was or an experience was. Uh, that you had or what you're going to bring to the table that's very unique. So, you know, it's time to really talk about yourself in a wonderful way. And I'm, I'm excited for you to do it. So make sure to do it. Awesome. I couldn't agree more. Um, it's, it's getting to be one o'clock. So the last few things we had, you know, once we just want to remind you, if you get this award, there will be mentorship opportunities. Um, and maybe more exposure for you as a filmmaker. And if you don't get the award, there are other grants to think about. Like we said, ArtsKC has an inspiration grant. Um, Charlotte Street in Kansas City has grants, Mid-America Arts Alliance, Missouri Arts Council. So keep applying. We'll definitely give you feedback on what went well and what could use work. So we're here to support you in other ways as well. And I think, I think that's all we have. Um, we're here to answer questions if you have any too. Lolo, anything? Jamie? Jason? Hey, uh, I, I just wanna say real quickly, thank you all for allowing me to sit in on this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take this information and provide it to some of my women friends who are directors and so, I'm going to, um, since I am a part of the African-American Artist Collective, we have a multiple discipline group of people there. So I'll, you know, pose to them and also 
um, reach out to some of my other women directors. And so thank y'all for letting me sit in. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. To come for filmmakers specifically. So stay with us on that. Okay. Going forward, okay. And thank you for spreading the word, Jason. It's really important. Okay. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? I have a weirdly specific question that might not help anyone but me. <laughs> On Go for the, it. the video samples that we need to attach to it, it does say that it needs to be something that you did not co-direct. And I was just curious because some of my, most of my most recent work is all co-directed. So I would have to go further back for solo directing work. And I just wanted to know which is more important there, if I need to do stuff I did alone or if I could attach to one of them, at least one of my more recent works. Can I, let me explore this with you out loud and with Tara out loud. If, here's what, here's my first thought. If you're, if this particular project that you're applying for Lolo, this grant is going to be a solo directing project. I would make sure to have at least one sample of your solo directing work from a long time ago. Um, if you're going to be co-directing this project, which is which is a possibility too, then definitely co-directing is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, you know, what I would definitely want you to show and explain what is challenging about co-directing <laughs> sometimes it's much harder to co-direct than to direct solo so um Tara what is your what are, what's your thought on that I would follow your lead yeah because it does say if applying as an individual you must have sole directing credit on both work samples um that's what it says we made the grant so we're we can question it and then it says <laughs> if as a co-directing team, samples in which co-directing teams share credits are encouraged. However, if first time working together, please provide samples from each director. Awesome, thank so, you. I mean, is if it, you- Is it possible, Tara, for her to supply more than two, two work samples just so that she can really support her application and explain that her solo work is from X long ago, more recently, and, and, you know, some of your really successful work recently, Lolo has been co-directed. So, you know, I think it would be worth, I mean, you could put in like two work samples from solo directing that are a long time ago. And then if, if it's still under 10 minutes, you could put, because they're links, so you can put as many in this text box if you want. I mean, we do, we are trying to keep it under 10 minutes for our evaluators, but if you put one and you said note to evaluators, you know, this is co-directing and I'm applying as a solo director, but I just want you to see this is more recent. So sure. maybe more, so you could put a note. Um, it's not going to disqualify you, you know, right. so. And did you, did you guys like tag team it by scenes by any chance? I mean, sometimes, you know, like this scene, if one of you is acting in it, maybe the other of you is more the director in a certain scene, maybe you could kind of do scene selection for the evaluators in that way. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. And I definitely could do that. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. Yay. And Jamie, I, I really think, and thank you for being honest about your first time directing stuff. I. I know that they're going to be looking for people who have done something before, especially because they're asking to see something you've directed before, right? As part of your, you know, work samples. But do you have, like, do you have anything you directed before, even, even if it was student work before? I might have lost Jamie. Oh, okay. no, she said she had a meeting, so maybe she's been in and out. She might be, yeah, she might be multitasking. Well, anyway, part of, part of this, it might be um, of value to go through this as an exercise or to really kind of think about your career and think about those times when maybe you've led a project and you have a work sample of that. Um, 
I don't know, or maybe this is something that we'll need to wait for next year and get get your project that you're that you are directing under your belt now, so that that you're primed for your next project with this particular grant. But I, I don't think it would hurt for, for you to go through this exercise and see what happens on the other side, too. And maybe kind of just make sure you think through all of your past, see if there's anything that you were the lead on a project for that might be able to count as your work samples. So I think that's all I've got, Miss Tara. I really appreciate you. And yeah, I appreciate you. And thank you, Lolo and Jamie, for coming and for everyone else that came. We really appreciate it. And we did record this, so we'll post it. And I'll send you an email kind of wrapping up, too. So if you think of any other questions, um, you can send them our way, and we'll get back to you. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Go filmmakers. <laughs>